The Isle of Wight, home to around 130,000 people, visited by 2.7 million tourists, and is known for its rich history and beautiful coastlines. As you can imagine, the residents hold the island very close to their hearts. This, perhaps, is why, since 1998, the islanders have been in disputes about the future of their sacred Isle of Wight. The fixed link is a possible connection between the Isle of Wight and the South Coast. It's been estimated to cost around £1.2 billion and would take five to six years to build. Now let's jump back to 1998, where there was a feasibility study. This essentially explored the idea of the Isle of Wight and the South Coast being connected via a bridge or a tunnel. And those plans went nowhere, but now in 2016, more plans have been proposed. Will they even go anywhere? Is a fixed link even realistic, cost effective, and there's so many other points that I haven't brought up yet. I'm Kieran Jemby, and this is The Missing Link. Now I think the first question that comes up in most people's minds is, is it even realistic? To find this out we're going to be talking to Carl Feeney who runs the ProLink campaign, Angela Hewitt who's an ex-councillor and seems to be the biggest person against, Andrew Turner who's our local MP and Chris Whitehouse who's an ex-councillor, as well as the members of the public. Personally no, I, I don't think there's going to be enough funding for it, um, we've got to find someone, private investor I guess to try and fund it. I think it could happen, yes. There is a short point that they could cross over, yeah. Probably not, no, with a lack of funding around at the moment. Um, they probably wouldn't get funded, I wouldn't imagine. Yeah, yeah, we've built bigger bridges than that before. Not really, no. Not financially, I think. We've got enough links with the, um, with the ferries, but it would make life easier if there was a link. I think it's completely unrealistic. Whether I want one or not is irrelevant, it's just not going to happen. However the link was to be constructed, it would be a massive engineering project, whether it's a bridge or a tunnel, they seem to be the, the two main options as far as I can see. And the question is why would we want it, why would somebody pay for it, and how would it be sustained in the long term? Why not? Why wouldn't it be? They're being built all over the world. And this, in fact, when you look at some of the constructions that they're building at the moment, especially in China, I mean China's a different kettle of fish, but um, in Europe, they're building some incredible structures. Uh, this is simple. Uh, it's no, no different to the Crossrail, perhaps, in, uh, in London. Um, in fact, it's easier than Crossrail in London. You've got a great deal more infrastructure to divert around, and uh, we're just going to go through under the Solent, back up the other side. It's actually just a road tunnel? Well, basically, I'm passionate about the Isle of Wight as a piece of a landmass. So looking at it in a totally different way, I look at the island as being a habitat, a natural habitat for wildlife, for the environment, and which we come to for 80 years of our life, possibly. And it's our duty to then be the environmental managers of that landmass and protect it from any intrusions that might destroy that landmass. I, I don't myself, but you know these things, there are people who know far more about it than I do on both sides. Um, my present position is that I don't think it's the right thing to have for the island, um, and I suspect that will continue. But if they've got a good story to tell, the best thing is that they get it out and tell it. Now, everything these days comes at a cost. Even building a bridge like this would cost a lot of money. So how much will a fixed link cost? Let's find out. Uh, the 1.2 billion came from the experts that we had over from the Netherlands. They were basically looking at the, uh, the lineage of the tunnel, uh, the type of tunnel that would be required, uh, a twin, twin board tunnel. Uh, the infrastructure that would most likely be required at each end and they compared it to other projects that they've done throughout the world and this was the conclusion. Uh, there was a plus or minus of 30% on that figure. To build a fixed link to the Isle of Wight, I mean, I'm not an expert on, I don't want to be an expert on no. how to build it, it's not of any interest to me whatsoever. But let's look at how much it costs to do other things. 
today in yeah. this day and age and they're, they're saying you know six billion ten billion so to build a fixed link from um, somewhere on the mainland which has got to be approved to somewhere on the island that's got to be approved and to get it over or under the Solent that is going to be a major engineering experience and cost and now I think we're talking about more like 10 billion yeah. I don't know, 100 million or something at least, and then probably would double up over the time of the construction. Oh, God knows. <laughs> at least treble what the first estimate will be. Billions, um, rather than millions, um, with all the other on, on costs and everything else to do it. So, yeah, I, th I think it's way, way out of the reach of the island. Too much. <laughs> a vast amount of money. Not a clue. Not a clue. Uh, millions, and it would go over budget. I think it is feasible, yes. I think it could be done, but I do hope it never is. <laughs> One thing I'd be absolutely clear on, the Isle of Wight Council is never going to fund a fixed link. The only way a fixed link could be developed uh, is with private capital investment. And there are big firms that do big projects like that. Unfortunately, they tend to go bust. The people who built the Channel Tunnel went bust. Um, and uh, people have had their fingers burned quite badly. But I think um, a fixed link in some ways would be good for business on the island. Um, wouldn't be good for the tourist sector, but at the moment big manufacturing companies would be reluctant to locate on the Isle of Wight if they're not already here, because just getting across the water costs money, and if they're manufacturing goods, then putting them back on ferries and taking them over costs quite a lot of money. So there is a deterrent to manufacturing industry to come to the island at the moment. There's no doubt that a fixed link would make it a more attractive place to work, because property is cheaper than on the mainland. Um, so there'll be all sorts of incentives to come here. Um, but we have to question what sort of industry we want on the island and whether the downside of having a fixed link, because there'd be a downside as well as that upside, would more than outweigh it. Now, obviously, this has to have some benefit to the Isle of Wight, as well as the South Coast, of course. But what exactly are those advantages? Oh, uh, now this, I could go on and talk for a long time. Uh, but the short answer is uh, you've got businesses that would be able to uh, take their goods, uh, receive uh, uh, base products uh, in a far more reliable and quick and easy way. Uh, they'd be able to uh, compete in a, world, uh, in a wider market uh, throughout the country and the world uh, and they'd be able to compete with other people that don't have the constraints of the Solent to overcome. Uh, it would be just as any other area, there would be a road that you could travel through at any time of the day and uh, any day of the year. And uh, you wouldn't have to book, you'd have no administration problems trying to book a, uh, a ferry. Uh, on a Friday, for instance, sometimes it's impossible to get a ferry crossing. And if you have customers that uh, uh, are looking for reliability uh, from your company, it's very difficult to assure that uh, when you have those constraints uh, and the, the tunnel will be able to uh, administer that reliability. Uh, improved transportation links, tr um, trade, um, yeah, ease, ease of access really. I think it would benefit the island in terms of um, a bit more mobility of island residents. I think it'd be a lot easier for people to get work. I've worked all the time. We've lived here 25 years and I've always worked on the mainland because there aren't jobs on the island. And it is sometimes really hard to get off the island. Well, we would get a lot more visitors and a lot more tourists, but I still really think that we want to remain an island. <laughs> there are actually quite a lot of advantages, such as more work, more visitors and tourists, easier travel, positive effect on the economy, surplus funds, young people having a better future, more industry and better education. But the fixed link can't come damage free, surely. So what would the disadvantages be? Basically, I'm passionate about the Isle of Wight as a piece of a landmass. So looking at it in a totally different way, I look at the island as being a habitat, a natural habitat for wildlife, for the environment, and which we come to for 80 years of our life, possibly. And it's our duty to then be the environmental managers of that landmass and protect it from any intrusions that might destroy that landmass. Yeah. So that's how I see the Isle of Wight. 
I love the fact that we live on an island. It has a character all of its own, and part of that is because it doesn't have a direct connection to the mainland. There's something very romantic uh, about getting on a ferry, something quite therapeutic as well. I always feel it's a bit like going on a retreat when I come back to the island at the end of a week in London. I don't think we need people speaking against it particularly, but you asked the question, so I'll give you an honest answer. I'm personally against it because I don't think it will ever happen, and I'm not going to spend time and effort campaigning for something that I don't believe is ever going to happen, not in my lifetime anyway. Um, so it's an issue that islanders will always get het up about. I suspect that if a fixed link was built, property prices would shoot up um, because they are so much lower here than on, on the mainland, so there'd be a quick win for some people. But I like the Isle of Wight, my family like the Isle of Wight, in part because it's an island. We'll still have a, a coastline, uh, an uninterrupted coastline all the way around us, which creates uh, that border which makes us an island. I guess there's always a worry that large sort of corporations or things like the hospitals might have to move off the island um, to a larger area of the population like Southampton. It depends whether, I mean ideally it would be a rail fix link, a tunnel, because then you'd encourage tourism and you could get people doing sort of environmentally friendly travel. Um, but if it wasn't, if it was going to be um, overground, then obviously you're going to potentially increase the traffic. I think it would uh, take away some of the distinctiveness of the island. It would have too much influence from the mainland coming over and you'd lose some of what makes the island special. We'd probably get too many tourists and I don't think... I don't think the people who live on the island would like the idea very much at all. Well, as I say, I think we get a lot of traffic over here. We don't, I don't think we've got the road infrastructure to support um, the mainland traffic coming over, although I don't agree with the ferry prices. Right. Crime. Crime will increase. Well, um, I think we might be living in a bit of a bubble because uh, uh, violence, for instance, the statistics for violence and domestic uh, uh, problems as well, uh, domestic crime, uh, is higher than uh, a lot of other counties. Uh, for instance, uh, you've got the New Forest um, and you've got Fareham. Now they're far lower on a crime rate than the Isle of Wight and they have several roads into them. Uh, it, <laughs> it doesn't matter, it seems, if you've got a road or not. It's the, um, it's the amount of deprivation you've got in an area that causes crime. People have suggested that the disadvantages are costs a great deal of money, change the island's image, creates potential traffic, creates environmental issues, has high maintenance costs, closure would create disruptions, more expensive ferries and crime rates may go up. So even if there was another feasibility study that was made and this was proven realistic, cost effective, it'd still be up to the general public via a referendum. So let's talk about that. Well, I, I can understand why people think I'm in favour of it. I'm not in favour of it at this moment because people who are trying to sell an idea usually spend their time, first of all, increasing numbers from 5,000 to 50,000. They're especially with the referendum because a referendum involves everyone and most people would say, I don't know enough about it. So we, you've got to do things by stages. Well, I sincerely hope not, because I think it would be a complete and utter waste of money to hold a referendum. It costs money for all those council officers to man polling stations. Um, I don't think there's any serious prospect of it. Um, if people want to work up um, a proposal um, for a fixed link and get it costed, they're perfectly free to do so. It would be very difficult for there to be a referendum. Several reasons. Uh, the council don't want one. <laughs> the MP certainly doesn't want one. It would be very difficult to administer. Um, who would vote? Uh, would the people on the mainland that where a portal would uh, come out at, would they be liable to vote? Um, if they did vote, how old would they have to be? Uh, would businesses be able to vote? Uh, the same on the island. You know, all these sorts of things have to be borne in mind. Um, what would the vote really achieve? Uh, no other infrastructure projects in the country has been governed, whether it should be done or not, by a, a referendum. We asked 21 people in the survey to see what passing members thought about fixed link debate. With people aged between 10 and 40, nine were for a fixed link and two people were against. Five people thought a fixed link was realistic and eight people didn't. Seven people travel to the mainland regularly, however only four people don't. 
With people aged between 41 and 70, we had a bit of a contrast. Six people were for a fixed link and four people were against. Eight people thought it was realistic and two people thought it wasn't. And four people travelled to the mainland regularly and six people didn't. So from these results, although small, it appears that age doesn't affect your opinion on the fixed link quite as severely as we stereotypically think, with the idea that older people don't want one and younger people do. So after learning from this experience, you know, speaking to people and researching topics, it appears that a fixed link isn't even going to happen for a long time. Then again, and especially in 2016, anything can happen. I'm Kieran Genvy, and this has been The Missing Link. <laughs>